name is Emma Garner. I'm a fish biologist with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Salmon Trout Enhancement Program. We are here today to talk about salmon biology at the confluence of the Siusaw River and Whitaker Creek. The fish we're here to talk about are fall Chinook salmon. Chinook salmon are the largest of the five species of salmon that are in the Pacific Northwest. And you can remember these five species by using your hand as a little guide. So first you use your thumb, which are the chum salmon. They're also known as the dog salmon because in Alaska they're fed to a lot of the husky dogs and some people think they're the least desirable salmon. They're my favorite salmon. They have a beautiful green body with purple stripes that come up the side. And then we have our pointer finger which you can use to poke or sock someone's eye. And that's how you can remember the sockeye salmon. The sockeye salmon are also known as the red salmon. So these salmon have a completely red body, just a really bright, vibrant red body when they migrate into freshwater. And then our largest finger is our middle finger, and that helps us remember the Chinook salmon, which is also called the king salmon. And our ring finger, if you wear a ring on it, maybe the ring is silver, which helps us remember the silver salmon, which is also the coho. And then our pinky is the smallest finger, and that reminds us of the pink salmon, and they are the smallest salmon. So when we're talking about salmon biology and freshwater, we're talking about the start of the journey for one group of salmon and the end of a journey for another. Salmon are an anadromous fish, so that means they start their life in freshwater, they migrate out to saltwater, and then they come back and finish up their life in freshwater again. So what we're seeing today is the end of the journey for the adult salmon who die after they spawn, and the start of the journey for the next generation and the juvenile salmon who are born in freshwater streams. So we'll start talking about the adult salmon and what the end of their life cycle looks like. And if we're lucky while I'm talking, maybe we'll see an adult salmon swim by behind me. The adult salmon, Chinook salmon, spend three to five years in the ocean before they swim upstream to spawn in their natal streams. So they're looking for cues to their natal streams, like scents, um, to swim up from the ocean and they'll spawn in the same stream that they're born in. And these fish here today have swam 45 river kilometers from the ocean to spawn here today. And what a fish is looking for when they spawn, not only are they looking for their natal stream, they're looking for the perfect gravel to spawn in. So if you look behind me, you can see a combination of size of rocks. We have what we call cobble and pebbles. So we have little rocks and then some pretty big rocks. And why that is important is the fish, when it builds its nest, which is called the red, it will sit on top of the gravel. And if you can imagine, my hand is the fin and the fish will swim like this and scoop and push the gravel out of the way. It kind of looks like if you were to take an ice cream scoop out of the rocks. And they're looking for gravel that is small enough that they can move it around and big enough to provide protection and safe shelter for the eggs. So these fish will swim up into the river. They'll look for, they'll, they'll sense their natal stream and they'll look for that perfect combination of rock and water. What they're looking for in water is something that will provide the elements to a success in their eggs. So if you look behind me, this water is pretty slow and the water right next to me is moving a little bit faster. They need something in between. Water that moves quickly will bring oxygen to the eggs. If it moves too fast, it will push the eggs out of the gravel. And if it moves too slow, it won't bring that oxygen to the eggs. So they will swim up, find that patch of gravel, and they'll swim around and you'll see the salmon flopping on its side and moving around and pushing that gravel out of the way. That's why when we see female salmon that are towards the end of the spawning process, their tails will be worn down. And you'll see a lot of white skin on the edge of their tails and white skin on their bodies where they've, um, where they've pushed that gravel out of the way. So the female will come up and she'll find her perfect habitat and she'll build her red. And then a male will swim up and a male will 
spawn with the female and together they'll fertilize and lay 2,000 to 5,000 eggs. So when the salmon live in the ocean, they have to hide from predators, which means that their scales are much more reflective. They're really bright. The water is very clear and bright and they need to blend into that. And what you'll see, maybe hopefully what you'll see behind me are salmon that look a little bit different because their appearance changes when they come into fresh water. So when a salmon moves into fresh water, a couple things happen. It stops eating because it's preserving all of its energy for those eggs in its belly and all of the energy it needs to swim that 45, sometimes more, miles upstream to spawn. Their bodies also start to change when they hit fresh water. So they'll lose that silver color that they have and they need to blend into their surroundings. So if you were a bear and you were moving through the woods looking to snack on a tasty salmon, a silver salmon would stick out like a sore thumb. So their bodies are going to darken, they're going to become a brown color, sometimes copper, and they get red on their sides. And that's what we'll see when the, fre when the salmon are spawning in fresh water. Something happens to their faces too. In the ocean, the salmon can cut through the water and swim really fast while they avoid their predators. So they're very streamlined and they have a very smooth face. In fresh water, the males will change and develop what we call a kipe. So if my hands are the face of the salmon, they go from this streamlined face and the male's nose will come out and hook down and it forms this little hook and they get these really big teeth because when the males want to spawn with the female, they almost always have competition. So there'll be one female on her nest and there'll be several males trying to mate with her. And the males will push each other with their tails, they'll scrape each other with their teeth, and they'll push each other with their noses, those kipe noses. And through that, a dominant male will come up and they will spawn and reproduce with the female. The female salmon can lay two to 5,000 eggs. So she's swimming up and saving all of her energy to put these eggs into one red. And these eggs start out, they're about the size of a pea and they're bright orange and they're called a zygote. And that is the first stage in their development. And that is a fertilized egg. And after 21 days, they become eyed eggs. So if you look closely on the, on the egg, it kind of looks like it's been sprinkled with pepper flakes. And those are the eyes of the fish developing. And they will be at an early eyed egg state for 21 days. Then they moved on to advanced eyed eggs and they're about 26 days old. And there is where you'll see the start of their spine developing and the rest of their body. When they hatch from their egg, they're called alevin and they're a newly hatched egg at about 38 to 40 days old. And they still kind of have these really dark buggy eyes and small delicate bodies. So it's important for them to stay sheltered in the red and stay sheltered in the nest at this stage so they don't become prey for our aquatic predators. And after about 57 days, they come out as they, they're sac fry. So they still have that egg sac on their belly, but they're starting to get more indicators that look like fish. So they're developing these par marks, which are their stripes down their sides. Um, their fins are a little bit more noticeable and they're developing more spots. After they've fully absorbed their yolk sac, we call them swim up fry and they're about 75 days old. And this is where they start to look like the fish that a lot of us are used to. You can see their gills, their stripes, their spots and all of their fins. And when they're fry, they'll remain in the water for a while and what's important here while well, they develop and they build up the strength to start their journey downstream towards the ocean is for them to have shelter, have a healthy stream that keeps them safe and provides them with a lot of food. So what they're looking for is cool, clear water that's providing macroinvertebrates for them to eat, that's providing shelter from the riparian system that they can hide in and hide from predators. And we're looking for healthy water that has the perfect water quality with the right amount of 
oxygen and nutrients so they can survive. So once they've grown to a size where they have enough strength to swim downstream and they're large enough to hide from predators, they're going to make that same 45 mile journey that their parents did, but they're going to swim out to the ocean. And what they swim to is what's called an estuary. That's where fresh water meets salt water. The introduction of salt water to these fish can be very overwhelming to them physically. So they'll need to spend a couple months in an estuary where their bodies adapt to the new water type. In this, air, in this time, they go through a process called smoltification, where they're going from fry to smolt. So we see these little fish that have spent time blending into their surroundings, hiding from predators. They've got their par marks and their spots, and now they're going to go back out into the bright ocean where they want to be that silver color. So they start through smoltification, they start to develop those shiny scales, that smoother texture, and their body adapts to the salt water, after which they'll swim out into the ocean and they'll live for three to five years before coming back and making the same journey that their parents did to their natal stream to spawn. Mm -hmm.